what's up y'all thank you so much for clicking play y'all are amazing shout out to all 621,000 of our lfr family i appreciate y'all man all right so first of all before i check this video out i just wanted to say that we are about to review candace owens when she was just now on the rise five years ago this video came out but the reason why i'm checking it out is because of what's happening in the the the, the meta fear the the metal world where people feel cool black people specifically feel cool with calling other black people names like coon and uncle tom and bootlicker and all these other things let me tell you something i don't think that's cool i don't think it's cool at all i think it's whack i think something that we've been doing forever has been uh we've been tearing each other down when we see other people starting to have a different way of thinking and i think that's some bs it's bull sugar honey iced tea i'm not gonna cuss on this video because i think it's a better way to communicate with people without cussing sometimes i'm and i'm choosing to do just that but one one thing y'all need to stop doing is as soon as you see someone go that way with their thought or that way with their way of thinking um maybe you should probably have a conversation with them try to understand why they feel um, the way that they feel rather than feeling like your way of thinking is superior to theirs and you feel like you should call them a coon or something else and that's the only reason why we're checking this video out right here candace owens is talking about the myth of the coon aka red pill black girl because that's what people see people want to put everyone in a box and and believe that and then stand on top of that box and make that your soapbox as if you deserve to be up there speaking to the masses as someone that's better than everyone else you are not you are not you don't know anybody's story out here and even if you did know they know their story you didn't live their life in order to have the same story they have all right so chill with that if you're a black person out there and you feel a need to see someone repping um conservatism or republican and you want to call them a coon or something like that bro that's whack it's weak it's weak anybody out there i don't care if you're well known i don't care if you're new to the new to the um to to to, to youtube or whatever it's weak yeah i said it feel free to react to this i don't care i back up whatever i say all right so we about to check out a brilliant young lady by the name of candace owens who's talking about this exact same thing when she was just now introducing herself to the world she was just introducing herself and she was on fire and the reason why she came to her conclusions is her own reasons and she don't have to run it by any of us <laughs> she's a grown woman all right so let's go and check this out y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in comments and i'm not going to stop this a whole lot because i have not seen this and i'm looking forward to watching it okay let's go hi everybody my name is candace owens and you are watching my vlog series the myth of the coon so foremost why the word coon that is socially unacceptable why would someone who is african-american say the word coon the first answer is because i can the second answer is because it's important that i do to me obviously i believe that the word coon is a myth in the african-american community which actually systematically words like uncle tom and coon these words systematically oppress black people which is quite ironic when said against the fact that the people that champion these phrases tend to think that they are the core of the black involvement and the black movement. To give you guys a current event, a recent example of this in the press is the Colin Kaepernick never-ending saga. He did not get re-signed for the NFL. Michael Vick came out, not swinging, but just essentially said that if he had any advice for Colin, it would be for him to get a clean cut and to go back to focusing on playing good football rather than politics. Michael Vick was attacked by a bunch of people and he was referred to as an Uncle Tom or a coon and Colin Kaepernick himself tweeted out um, a diagnosis for him saying that he had Stockholm Syndrome. The insinuation wow. being that he fell in love with his captors, he fell in love with the white people and he was grateful to the white people, which is why he was speaking out against or just giving him suggestions that would ultimately help his career. Getting a haircut and showing up to work without causing any drama is generally good advice. Uh, Colin Kaepernick was performing extremely well in the NFL, 
until he decided that he was suddenly offended by the national anthem. I don't think there is a single job in America, um, whether you are white, black, Spanish, regardless of your race, that you can show up in and consistently cause drama. Uh, and you will not eventually just be ousted, particularly with changing the sports. People will actually participate. I never looked at it that way. Thank you. No, seriously, I've never looked at it that way. I never looked at it that way. My old way of thinking would have been like, you know what, Michael Vick, that's some sucker stuff to say to another black man, bro. Tell him to cut his hair and to act right for for his for his uh for his supervisor. What in the world are you doing telling him to do that? Everybody else, see, and what I'll be judging by is everyone else's haircuts, the way everyone else carry on already in the NFL. Everyone else wear wild stuff, and they do whatever they want to do. How come he got to curb the way that he talk or decide to not cause any problems? He can do whatever he want. But when you mature, <laughs> you try to figure out, okay, this is my this is my thing. What would I tell my sons to do? That's what I do. All right, let's get back to um to Candace. And go to sports and spend a lot of money and spend $12 for a hot dog to tune out, to not be involved in politics, to just be involved in the emotion of the sport with, you know, absent any feelings or political affiliation. Bottom line, I think that Michael Vick gave Colin some sound advice. But once again, the black community, when they see that, they say, oh, you're not one of us, you're one of them. We have to stop doing this because we need to evolve. We have to understand that showing up everywhere angry or showing up everywhere disappointed is not going to get us anywhere in the world or in society that we would like to be. Say it again and say it loud enough so that the people in the back can hear it. Because we feel like if we show, if we don't show up, no matter of fact, we feel like if someone shows up too happy, like what's your problem? Why are you so happy? You don't see what's going around, going on around here, brother? Huh? If you wanted this right here, you you this right here. They don't treat us like them. If you wanted them, if you want us, you know we're not gonna be treated like them. Cause we don't ever like they they can get away with it. Not them. They can, but not us. Like, come on, bro. It's always the same thing over and over and over. White people, I have a whole bunch of white people. Um, fans and supporters this is a headache it's a headache so I know y'all we are all human beings man and we all have our own sugar honey iced tea to deal with and me from the black community seeing this type of stuff happen all the time all the time it's nauseating, bro, especially when you know it only happens to people who are stepping outside the box. It's like, whoa. Whoa. Are we the modern are we the modern day slave owners? Are we the modern day masters? Like they trying to get away. They trying to get away, boss. They trying to get away. Look at them, they trying to get away. They don't want to be with us no more. Or they, they, they feel like they different now. We should, we should quiet them. We should silence them. We should cancel them. Same people that's calling everyone else an Uncle Dag on Tom. You're doing the biggest injustice for your own community. And you don't even realize it. There are a lot of things that I believe in personally that would make me either a coon or an Uncle Tom. The first of them being that I don't support the Black Lives Matter movement whatsoever because the Black Lives Matter movement does not support me. I think that a better title for that movement would be Black Deaths Matter. They seem to protest, and they seem to rage, and they seem to ruin, and they seem to support violence when a black person dies. What about when a black person lives? There are tons of black people that are trying to better themselves in their community. There are tons of black people that are disadvantaged by the homes that they are born into and just not having money. These groups do not fund them. They will pay for somebody's funeral, but they will not pay for somebody's college education. People that fund these movements like George Soros, who has more money than God, who has the money to 
take people straight out of the projects yep, he and does. put them into white communities he to does. fund their education and to fund them living in places that are better than the ones they are born, refuses to do so. Instead, he encourages and he solicits black violence. He encourages us screaming in the street about black deaths, and he therefore encourages us getting arrested, ruining our own records, and making it impossible once again for us to thrive in society. We go back. I think that it is the most hypocritical movement on the planet and will absolutely nothing to do with it. From a statistical standpoint, are black people being gunned down more often than white people? Absolutely not. The media will try to tell you so because there is more value in black people portraying this stereotype as angry than there is in you actually being educated and understanding the things that our community is actually facing as an enemy. One thing that is the big Yo, I can't imagine how anybody can watch Candace do this talk right here and think she's coming from hate. They watch this right here and think that she's less of a person, less of a black person. She don't have to walk around with a black fist in the air to say I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. She ain't got to do that. I mean, shout out to to um, 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 um to James Brown for that. But she ain't got to do that. What she's doing right now, she's really trying to represent and say, yo, there's a better way. There's a better way. And people are looking at her like, oh, you just think you better than us. That's all that is. You think you better than us. You think just because you got friends, friends with the white people, that you can tell us what to do and how to live. You're not even part of this black culture. So stop trying to act like you love this black culture. Being part of the black culture mean that whatever we're for, for the most part, you got to be for. I'm sorry. I love Tyler Perry because of the way that man thinks. He is a brilliant man when it comes to bringing people together, unifying and, and putting together like giving people jobs so that they can forever chase their dreams and, and just building wealth and showing other people how to do it. You're, you are amazing for that Tyler Perry, but some of the stuff that he does and his, his shows and some of his movies, even I don't jive with, I just don't, I get nothing from him. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Seeing him run around in a dress that does nothing for me. I don't want to see that. It's not hilarious to me. It's hilarious to a great deal of people in my community, but it's not hilarious to me. I don't get anything from it. Nothing. So stop trying to pigeonhole people and make people do exactly what you're doing. You never would tell your child to do what the, what the masses are trying to bully you to do. You would never tell. If you were, if the way y'all are treating Candace is something that you will advise your children to do, you know what? Go forth and continue to, you know, do do Satan's business. Do Satan's work all you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because clearly you don't believe in the same God she believes in or I believe in. That's real. Biggest problem in the black community is our support, which is so ironic when you think about the fact that we continually support these Democratic candidates. Our support of planned Parenthood, which has actually decreased the black population by 34%. Black babies are being slaughtered every single day, and yet we stand behind the lines of the people that fund that. They fund a black massacre. There are no black voices standing up and saying this is wrong. And if they do stand up and say it's wrong, they are dismissed as an Uncle Tom. And, and honestly, that right there is one of the things that I really, really don't understand because we all we grew up as Christians like we were forced as children to go to church and learn the ways of Christ. But now we're all for getting rid of babies, giving ourselves an, uh, a, a constant pass on being irresponsible. That's what we want to do. But we never want to think critically enough to try to understand how come all of these Planned Parenthoods are in our neighborhood? Why are they always around here? Why are they encouraging this so much? 
Why are they encouraging it so much? I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. I have no clue. I'm happy to be an Auntie Tom to tell you guys a little auntie bit more Tom. about what our community needs to do to better themselves. Everything starts and ends with education. Uh, we, we cannot better ourselves unless we understand what it is that we are up against. Of course, systematically black people were oppressed, but of course you cannot just stick your hand out and ask for favors to get over that oppression. The most recent example of that, uh, people that we can look to, are the Jewish community. The Jewish community had the odds stacked against them after World War II. They were escaping Germany with the clothes on their back and look at where they are in the world right now. They did that by building a community of people that supported one another. There is no Jewish phrase for an Uncle Tom. When some I'm glad you brought up the Jews, and I, I will speak on that, but I just want to say the, the fact that they still live the word of God. I don't, even if they're not the most religious, they still make sure that they operate off of those principles. We, and, and black people feel like um, the reason why they are so far ahead and they got so much money and so much wealth is because they receive reparations. Where's our reparations? Bruh, first of all, you're loud and wrong, breath all strong, trying to do the wop, need to go to the barber shop. You don't know what the world you're talking about, for one, all right? They're doing this because they apply certain ways of living, and they make sure that their children apply certain ways of living. I don't care how many, and I, no, 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 I stand by this, I don't care how many reparations you give to African Americans. If we have the same way of living and the same way of thinking that we have right now, that money will be gone like this. And also our communities will be even more messed up faster than you can blink. Faster than you can blink. Because we will have the money to fast forward it. We will put our foot on the gas and destruction. Because we don't look out for each other like that. We see one of ours, we see one of our black people move forward and start learning. And then when they learn something, they be like, yo, guess what? They've been teaching us the wrong thing all along. Y'all need to listen to what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I love y'all. I know we went through the same thing well, in 1619, since 1690. I get it. I get it. But I've learned something. I want to teach y'all this. Come on, man. It's going to be for the better of all of us. And you're like, you are Uncle Tom, man. I see you. You over there with them, huh? You drinking a Kool-Aid now. Okay. All right. Nah, do you. You keep that. Keep that. I don't want that. We good. We good. You're not good. You're not good. Somebody in their community made it and thought differently and made it a little further. They encouraged that person. And when that person got to the top, they hired from the underground of their communities, which is something that as black people, we have to learn from. Absolutely. I do not remember the name of the person whose video I watched, but he was an African-American leader, uh, similar to an Al Sharpton. He basically acknowledged the fact that no matter what you do for black people, if you do not marry a black person, then everything you did doesn't count and you are a traitor. When people speak to you like this, you need to turn off the TV. As a black community and as a black person, I have dated within my race, I did it outside of my race. Your highest priority, um, as a human being should be to marry someone who thinks like you, to marry someone that will bring you the successes that you desire in your own life and to turn off the absolute garbage that tells you differently. That is the end of my Candace rant about why I do not support Black Lives Matter. Please stay tuned. I will be putting out weekly videos. I guess the term nowadays is weekly vlogs and they will all be entitled The Myth of the Coon. Thank you guys so much for listening. All right, so yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for if I if I said anything to, to to offend any of you. You know I ain't mean it. You know I ain't mean it. Unless you just one of them jerks that want to, you know, um, skip the line and just call somebody an idiot without knowing too much about them, or or call someone an Uncle Tom or a coon or all this other BS, man. I think that's I think that's trash. I think it's trash. I'm telling you right now. I think it's trash. I'm not telling you anything right now that I wouldn't say to you face to face. And y'all know that already, man. 
It's just, it's not love. It's not love. You think it's love, but it's not love, right? Because it's not one of us right now who do not want to see our children and our children's children thrive and live in a world where they don't have to face the same kind of negativity we face and the same kind of hate our ancestors have faced. Because most of us haven't faced nearly the same level of hate that our ancestors have faced. But we act like it. We want to carry it on, carry it on our backs and our shoulders as if we do on a day-to-day basis and that couldn't be further from the truth we need to get it together guys we need to do a better job i love y'all man i don't know if y'all know it or not but i do whether you watch my videos or not i love y'all only because you know we're all the same we all have skin bones we bleed we have flesh we're the same we all see through the same things, eyes. We all smell through the same thing, nose. We all taste through the same thing and talk through the same thing, hear through the same thing. What's so different about us? Chill, man. Chill, relax with the hate. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care what color you are, what race you are. Relax with the damn hate. Our days are getting shorter, man. The older we get, our days are getting shorter. Let's live in some some type of some type of peace, man. Let's try to make things better for people. Not coddle. I ain't say nothing about coddling. Don't coddle for anybody. Allow people to carry their own cross. This is their cross, the bear. But the Bible says, "There have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man." Basically, God will help you get through whatever you go through. There is nothing uncommon to God. He's seen it before. Whatever you're going through, he can get you through. Just believe. And if you don't believe, then I would encourage you to. Because we are all the same. All right? Three things were created from God, okay? Creation, sun, stars, sky, all those trees. Creatures, monkeys, Dogs, cats, um, giraffes, pigs, goats, and creators in God's image. Us. This is what we do. So when you expect somebody not to get upset with you for constantly volunteering to murder a creation that you created... I don't know what to tell you some people believe in god some people believe in the way that we're supposed to move we're supposed to create we're supposed to protect one another and make sure that this nation is good all right and if we can't do that please y'all are choosing destruction too much because it's so more it's so much more fun to party and get all get all wild and say whatever i say whatever i want to say they know I say whatever I do, whatever I want to do. How come what you want to do and what, what you want to say is always negative? I'm done, man. That's my rant. And I'm not calling it the myth of a coon. <laughs> and you better not either. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual. Love y'all.